All right, what's going on guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing my review for the premiere for Better Call Saul Season 4. This year's premiere is called Smoke. And spoil the warning, if you guys have not seen this episode yet for Better Call Saul, you're going to want to watch it before you watch this review. So just finished watching the uh, the episode, and, uh, you know, I enjoyed it. This was quite a wait for this year's uh, Better Call Saul to premiere, because we're used to uh, Better Call Saul usually airing in the springtime, uh, which is a good time for it. But this year, they didn't start it until right now, which, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I would have liked to have seen it return at the usual time, kind of each year. We'll have to see next year for Season 5. It has been renewed for season five uh, when that's going to premiere if it's going to be kind of uh, late summer like this one or if maybe they can move it up a bit which I I kind of hope they uh, they can I'm not sure how many more seasons they're going to do a better call Saul they did originally say that about five seasons was what they were going to shoot for but I mean who knows? You know, uh, I thought this premiere was was really great, and I could definitely see them uh, finding some story there to probably stretch it past the season five if they want to do that. But it'd be kind of crazy to see Better Call Saul last more seasons than Breaking Bad. Something about that just doesn't it doesn't sit right with me. Uh, but you know, hey, you know what else? Uh, what else would they do? I mean, with this universe. Uh, after Better Call Saul is finished, I tend to think that the whole Breaking Bad universe is probably uh, done, and that's probably all we'll see unless they do some kind of sequel with pretty much all new characters or something. Um, you know, on AMC afterwards, which I don't think they will really do. So, uh, Smoke and uh, Cross to Bear. So we start the episode off, we've got the uh, the Cinnabon with uh, Gene or, <laughs> or uh, Jimmy uh, as he's kind of waking up and being uh, wheeled out uh, since he's uh, passed out and everything. They check him over, they find out that he's basically fine, he's basically okay, and if anything, he probably had some kind of uh, panic attack or something of the sort and kind of just, just, uh, just passed out from it due to what happened uh, last season. Um, and then we have him in the hospital and you get kind of the scenes with him with his license and um, you know it's a it's a fun one because we're not sure if he's going to get caught the fact that he you know being around the authorities and being in the hospital like that uh, it brings into question whether or not they're going to recognize who he is and then even when he gets in the uh, the taxi cab he sees the uh, Albuquerque and then the guy's eyes like looking at him like uh, with the, <laughs> with uh, kind of an intense stare so to the point where he asks him to pull over and he gets out and just kind of walks walks away like quickly uh, you know even though the cab is like kind of staying there uh, without the guy saying uh, anything and kind of a, a creepy sort of does he know does he know Gene does he know Jimmy uh, type of thing from his uh, his days in uh, in Breaking Bad and uh, what happened with him before so they continue to just give us like little sections we roll the intro at that point but uh, just little clips uh, each season as we go through for Better Call Saul so you have to continue to watch the show uh, just to get to kind of understand that story afterwards from post Breaking Bad uh, I mean really you know it's the only thing that we the only way we have to experience that universe after Breaking Bad is in Better Call Saul so uh, I like that they're still doing it I like that they're including it but I almost sometimes find the future storyline to be uh, even more compelling than the past one even though in this one there was a lot of things happening so I love the future stuff and I'd like to see even more of it before the series ends hopefully we will and whether or not Jimmy will be found out in the end I, I tend to hope that when Better Call Saul wraps up that Jimmy will have a happy ending because uh, I don't uh, like you know it's been a little while since I've watched Breaking Bad but I don't think we can really hold him accountable for all the stuff that happened with Walter White in Breaking Bad um it seems to be more like uh, Walter White kind of was this uh, this crazy loose cannon that kind of came in and <laughs> blew the whole thing up, right? As Mike said, we had a good thing going, uh, and they just come and destroy everything. So, uh, you know, I, I tend to blame Walt for what happened at the end of Breaking Bad more than, than Jimmy. So we get the intro, and uh, pretty much right away, you know, they're waking up, and uh, they're finding out about uh, Chuck and what happened. Uh, you've got, um, you know, uh, HHM or HH Calling, uh, and you got Howard there, and he's basically, and you know, I liked all the stuff with Howard in this uh, in this episode. So first, he ignores it, even though it's a call about uh, Chuck, and then they get the uh, the voice uh, mail, and um, they kind of race over, and he sees the house burnt down, which was a pretty cool re uh, reveal to see, because you just see the whole thing is just burnt right down, and he's just kind of like. Um, 
you know, Jimmy just kind of shuts down. He's like sitting there. He doesn't know what to do. And, and he's kind of slowly starting to put the pieces together. He notices that all the electronics have been put back out. So he, it seemed like he was doing a lot better. Chuck was doing great. Everything was going good for him. And then all of a sudden, he's just gone right back into that uh, reclusive uh, state that he was in before with uh, being uh, afraid of the, um, you know, uh, electricity and everything. And, and in this case, um, you know, Howard kind of reveals later on, which w- we already kind of knew that, but he kind of confesses to Jimmy and he says that, uh, that he must have uh, committed uh, suicide. And then we get, uh, you know, a couple other things as well too happening. So we got the continuation of stuff that's happening with Nacho and uh, and Gus Fring. Of course, uh, as we know from Breaking Bad, Nacho is not in it. So something's got to happen to Nacho, right? <laughs> so we'll have to see how this goes. Does he get uh, wrapped up in this? Does Gus know that he did this to uh, Hector? It seems so. And then he's got one of his men uh, tailing him. And he kind of sees him, you know, dump the stuff uh, over the, uh, the bridge there, even though Nacho Nacho thinks nobody is uh, is watching. So has he been found out? It kind of it, it always feels like with Gus that Gus knows basically everything. Like, like Gus knows everything that's happening. Uh, you know, he's with it. If Walt's coming up to his house or whatever, he knows where he like he he's got eyes everywhere. He knows what's going on, right? So uh, you're not really going to catch Gus off guard, or it's not like he doesn't know what's going to happen. Um, and he just he really hates uh, Hector. So as we know, what happens with him later on, and they kind of uh, Hector kind of gets uh, revenge on him too, or well maybe. Not not revenge he's not responsible for what happened here nacho is right so with uh with um uh, hector last uh, last season um so discussion about the uh, the war the war coming and everything that's uh, that's going to happen with uh, with hector kind of going down and uh, you know the uh the infrastructure they're wanting to keep things afloat and keep things running uh even though the uh, the boss man uh is not uh you know uh, is not going to be around for a while because of the stroke or what have you. Um, so we had that. We had the fun scenes with Mike, which I did enjoy this episode because he's kind of he's washing his money through, so he's getting it uh, from a magical right. So he's uh, <laughs> with Lydia and everything, and he's going through. And I love this part because uh, he's he's earning his pay even if he's just coming in for like one day, right? <laughs> so he uh, he takes advantage of Barry, uh, who's just a, a mark in the situation, and he uh, dead battery. He probably you know clipped uh, did something obviously did something to his car, so he couldn't get there. To work and then uh, he uses his card to go in and everything and does a security audit which is fun and he makes sure basically everyone who's important there will remember that he was there right so it's like <laughs> it's like he's getting paid this paycheck and everything and he's on the books he wants everyone there to know everyone who sees him he wants them all to remember him and uh, you know <laughs> and be able to speak to that he was there right because uh, the thing is like at your at your job like that as you're working through if you have a guy like that come through you know you don't forget them it could be two or three years later you'll still remember that old guy that gave you shit for not wearing gloves when you're doing a count or something in the uh, loading place <laughs> loading area so i enjoyed all that stuff that was really funny and uh, you know he's awesome right so uh mike is always great to see in uh, in the in the show he does um, he does a great job man um so we got all that stuff and uh, just you know the ending of the episode as it wraps up as uh, howard so at first jimmy's really sad and then Howard takes responsibility for it, saying, and then Jimmy basically says, it's your cross to bear, uh, because uh, the driving factor behind it, according to Howard, was the uh, the insurance, and that's what created the divide in the argument between them, and them going uh, two different ways with regards to leadership, and as a result uh, of that uh, splintering, uh, Howard uh, forcing um, you know Chuck out, and then of course with Chuck kind of committing suicide afterwards, as Howard kind of knows, um, you know, Howard takes, uh, takes responsibility for that. And Jimmy basically lets him. <laughs> so it really feels like Jimmy's just like, oh, okay, so it's not my fault. Okay, it's all on you then. Okay, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's your deal then. You can deal with the guilt. I'm good then. And anyone want coffee? You know, <laughs> it's all good. Um, but the thing is about it too is that Jimmy's hands definitely are not clean either because he's the one who put in the hint or the, uh, the call into the insurance to start that whole situation to begin with. And then, of course, Howard and him went at it. And it's like, you know, so I, I guess for Jimmy, it seems to me that he's just looking for an easy way out so that he can just pass the guilt on Howard and be like oh, okay well yeah it's your fault you know I may have done this but you know you're the one that pushed him out or whatever and you didn't have to do that and that wasn't what I had intended and so uh it's what it is so he just basically you know you're across the bear you know it's your fault basically said okay fine you take the blame for it then <laughs> you know whatever so then he just uh, he perks right up and he seems to be uh, okay at least at least for now um because maybe up until then he might have been considering or blaming himself for what happened or thinking that maybe it was something he did which it kind of was indirectly but then then, of course, the actual split 
was what uh, was what caused Chuck to, to do that. And, you know, it makes me think of Chuck and kind of uh, with the eulogy and everything and, you know, what Howard was saying about him is like, you know, that really does seem like someone who's hyper conscientious, right? Somebody who's like, you know, uh, once they stop working, they just die, you know, like <laughs> those people that they just can't stop working. It's like their identity, like him as like a, you know, an established lawyer as Chuck, he can't stop working. And then once he, once he does stop working, he, he dies, you know, he basically, he feels worthless and he commits suicide. like, that's how harsh he is on himself. And, um, you know, one of the downsides of somebody being a really hard worker is like, what do you do when you get older and then you have to stop? How do you still find a sense of meaning in life? And, uh, you know, when people don't want you anymore, right? So you, you've got your, 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 your age is way up there and, and maybe, you know, for him, he's got kind of a mental condition or things he's kind of developed and then he gets pushed out and that's just like it for him. He has nothing left. So he, uh, he opts out, right? He opts out. So, um, you know, ah, crazy stuff. So I thought it was a good premiere episode for the season. I thought the stuff with Mike was really fun. Uh, the stuff with, um, with Nacho was good with Gus and that. And, um, you know, the stuff with, uh, with Jimmy and Kim and, and Howard was, um, you know, emotional, but at the same time, I thought it was, uh, it was fun. It was interesting. And, um, you know, uh, we already knew Chuck was, was gone last season. So, you know, we pretty much knew that was going to happen already. And they kind of used it the season before anyway, because he kind of had fallen down and that whole thing. And uh, so, you know, we, we knew that this was going to happen at some point. We got to see it here. So uh, a lot of things still left to see before the end of the series, though. We know that it's going to get its fifth season. You know, what's going to happen with Kim and Jimmy? It does this kind of cross to bear and uh, Jimmy allowing Howard to take all the blame? Is this going to cause uh, some kind of rift between uh, Kim and Jimmy uh, and their relationship possibly? We know they don't end up together in, in uh, you know Breaking Bad. So obviously something has to happen. What's it going to be? We're going to have to to wait and see. So in terms of the premiere, I'm going to give it an 8.7 out of 10. I thought it was a good premiere. Um, you know, some fun stuff, some sad stuff, but all around, uh, I thought it was a really good showing for the first episode of Better Call Saul Season 4. So excited to see the rest of the season and happy to see the series is still on happy to see it's still continuing uh, I find it to be very enjoyable and um, you know can't wait to see how they kind of wrap this up in the next couple of years um, you know unless it gets to season 6 which would be awesome but <laughs> I don't know if it's going to we'll see we'll see let me know what you guys think leave a comment below how did you feel about the uh, Better Call Saul season 4 premiere how did you enjoy it and how many more seasons do you think Better Call Saul will get uh, if you like this video, please don't forget to thumb it up below. You can also share a favorite. And if you're new and you want to subscribe, bottom left to subscribe. That's it for this one, guys. I'll see you again soon for another video. As always, this is Trev. And I'm saying peace. Later, guys. I'll see you soon.